welcome to today's CLA webinar. Uh, today's topic is Clean and Green, Sustainability Practices for Today's Laundromat Operations. My name is Bob Neiman. I'm the editor of Planet Laundry Magazine, uh, and I will serve as your moderator today. Uh, each month, we like to uh, take a topic that appeared in Planet Laundry, uh, and uh, today's topic actually is the cover story of the June issue, uh, and this is a chance to go a little bit deeper uh, into that topic. Um, we'll begin by asking our panel uh, some questions, uh, and then you can ask your questions at the end of, uh, of this program. So let's meet our, uh, our panel. Uh, we have with us today Dave Heberly of Ozone Laundry, Kathy Neely of Spin Doctor Laundromats, and Matt Seauer of Wash World Eco Laundry. Thank you so much for being here, all three of you. Uh, Dave, let me start with you. So what's your personal definition of a green laundry? Um, well, it's it's pretty much wasting less, um, less energy, less resources, less hot water, less um, chemicals, and recycling whenever possible. Um, and then really the uh, big part of that is then preaching what you practice and try to get others to understand what you're doing and, and try to give them a reason that they should also do similar activities when they're laundering. Okay. How about you, Matt? What, what, what does a green laundry mean to you? Uh, green laundry to me is a laundromat that is built and operated uh, with sustainability and environmental stewardship in mind. It's one of its primary core values and it actively markets that core value to its customers. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Well, I'm gonna let me stay with you, Matt. Uh, why is it important that your business be at least somewhat green, somewhat sustainable? Well, uh, we we feel very strongly that environmental stewardship and sustainability is just flat good business. It's what is, you know, the initiatives that are coming down in most demographics and regions are only gonna become more stringent and more restrictive. And I think our, us as an industry and operators need to be looking forward and looking ahead to try to get ahead of this curve uh, with newer machine technology, you, you know, reducing utility consumption, really just looking to lower our overall operating costs. At the end of the day, this is good for the environment and it's good for the business. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Um... Dave, how about yourself? Why, why, why is it so important uh, that uh, ozone laundry be green? Well, well I think it's, it's something that the, the country is kind of lacking. Um, and, and we're kind of at the tail end of things now. Uh, we, need, we need to get the community behind this, the sustainability issues. And, and we need to explain and show people how they can make a difference, you know, even in their own small ways. And, and that's what we're kind of through education, through showing people what to do, how to uh, do laundering more sustainable. That's kind of kind of the way forward. We can't always have start from the get go with, you know, expensive, more expensive and new equipment that mm -hmm. is, you know, sustainable. Mm -hmm. So we have to stress the behaviors and mm -hmm. teach people, uh, get them thinking about how they can make less of a uh, waste and use less while they're laundering. Right, right. Kathy, same, same question for you. Why is it important uh, that you run a, a somewhat uh, sustainable business? Well, there's a couple of reasons. The first is that the general public seems to think that we generate a lot more pollutants into the environment. So it's really good for the image of laundries in general that we are we have a green footprint that we're thinking about um, that in terms of you know doing good things for the for the community. But I, I especially agree with with Matt that it's it's just good for business. If you're thinking strategically, um, your core customers right now are millennials. Um, they're in, you know, the family um, period of their time and Gen Z's coming up right behind them. And 70% of them 
feel very strongly and advocate for environmental issues. So if it's going to be a differentiating factor for them in choosing mm -hmm. a laundromat, um, you're going if you're prepared, you're going to capture that that audience because it's it is a differentiator. You show that you really care about something that's important to them. Mm -hmm. No, that's a great point. The, the the differentiator and having it be good for business. And mm -hmm. that kind of leads me to the next question. And let me stay with you, Kathy. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the relationship between sustainability and profitability with a laundromat? How do what is that balance and, and what's that relationship? Well, I think that, you know, when we think about um, our word of use, um, use of paper, um, that um, we can certainly reduce our operational costs if we can um, use less water. So mm -hmm. in a store like, like the one I have where the washers are weighing the clothes and it's using less water, um, your water bills naturally are going to be lower. If you have um, low flush uh, um, toilet tanks in your uh, washrooms and bathrooms, you're going to be using less water. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have le lead um, LED lights, you're going to be losing less electricity. Mm -hmm. If you give incentives for using cold water, all of these work to reduce your your bills. Mm -hmm. And if you reduce your operational cost, um, then you, you're going to certainly make a little bit more profit, I would mm -hmm. assume. Mm -hmm. Perfect. No, great, great points. Um, Matt, same same question for you. Can you talk a little bit to that balance of sustainability versus profitability and running that store? Well, they go hand in hand, Bob. I mean, we can't do can't be sustainable uh, unless it's unless there is profitability aligned. And so, you know, we've talked about it. It's been touched on a few times here. Is mm -hmm. that the demographics and the generations that are coming up behind us? value environmental stewardship and really are looking for options to where they spend their money and how they spend their money on sustainable businesses. Mm -hmm. So along with just the fact of reducing energy and utility uh, use, the fact that we can bring more uh, people into the system, into through our doors to give them a sustainable option, mm -hmm. it's that's where the big, uh, the big gain is for mm -hmm. the we have a great story to tell as an industry. We just have to tell it. And that's the biggest thing that I think that you and everybody uh, that, you know, within the CLA is trying to do is change the perception out here. So for the public and for agencies to understand that we're doing a lot already for sustainability mm -hmm. and uh, stewardship. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's great for business. I think long-term, we're going to see technology continue to catch up in our industry um, with some of the some of the current standards and regulations. And I think we're going to be pretty soon, like I said, if we can continue to tell that story, I think we're going to change perception across mm -hmm. the board. Right, right. It, it is about that. It's about education and changing the changing the mindset a little bit, isn't it? Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. D Dave, do you have anything to add to that? The whole uh, sustainability versus profitability or going hand in hand? Anything to add to that that's been already said? Well, I'm, uh, I'm thinking that profitability is a good byproduct if you can get it. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's, it shouldn't be the driving force, you know, behind going for sustainability. I mean, we right. should be doing that because mm -hmm. of, for larger reasons, Mm -hmm. to see how we can um, encourage some kind of cumulative effect by the people that come to us and, and use our, our equipment. And, uh, and that's going to take education and, and people being shown because a lot of the people that come in to a laundromat, you know, do not, are not looking for sustainability issues they do, okay. they're looking to get get their clothes washed and get out of there right. you know so right. we have a job we have a job to try to stimulate their their uh how they look at things mm -hmm. by what we can tell them you know and, and what we can show them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. well well Dave, what are, what are some of the biggest barriers i guess to laundries becoming more eco-friendly and more sustainable what are what are those barriers and I think you kind of brought it up a little bit. Well, how much time do we have here? <laughs> uh, 
you know, the, the one of the basic issues is the <clears throat> hot water. Um, and the people that come in say, well, my grandmother used hot water, her mother used hot water. We use a lot of detergent and a lot of bleach. We got it because we, that's how we wash. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me any, anything different. Yeah, um, you know, so people are, have this, um, the, the way that the conventional wash system is. I mean, you look, you go walk into a Walmart or a Target and you see aisle after aisle of, you know, bottles of detergent and various, uh, you know, odor maskers and, you know, you see all that and all that stuff gets, you know, hauled around. And so I'm saying that you need that those kind of products but we need less of them we can't you mm -hmm. can't keep using what we're using now with people mm -hmm. are coming in and just dumping detergent into, into the washers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know it's it's it's, it, it's something else you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah yeah I know it's, it's a lot it has a lot to do with educating people and and to getting them thinking along a different way mm -hmm. right Kathy, I saw you kind of shaking your head and agreeing. Oh, yes. Uh, have you run into these kind of barriers and or, or others as far as you've tried to grow your, your eco-friendly uh, business platform? Yes. Um, I What I try to do is do the, the, the carrot versus the stick. I, I provide, um, it, I do graduated pricing. So the hot water is maybe a little bit more cost prohibitive than mm -hmm. using the cold water. I have some informational um, tickets that I, I leave up in a, on a shelf and it explains to them how using cold water can be just as effective as, as, as using hot water. And I know it's a hard habit to to, to break because as you know as, as David says you know people get used to pouring a lot of detergent in they want to see the bubbles mm -hmm. um they want the hot water and yeah. and all that but if it's it's going to affect their pocketbook then maybe we can get them to change um the habits and so I price the hot water at a good 20 25 percent more and I give them information about how the, the detergents nowadays are so effective in cold water. I mean, you've seen the stone cold, cold on, on TV with Ice Cube, and they're talking about Tide being so effective. And, and they say, yeah, yeah, I did see that commercial. And I said, well, does, does that resonate with you? And they say, yeah, yeah, I think I'll give it a try. Mm -hmm. So, um, right. you know, it's, it is, you know, as, as David says, you know, educating uh, people for sure. But... Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that anyone who's an owner right now should um, think about um, doing this, the small things, you know, just putting the recycled containers or at least one out so you can get them into the habit mm -hmm. of, of doing things in a sustainable fashion. And, and also looking to find out if there's any government grants for doing solar or doing the LED lights, things like that, that um, they may pay a nominal charge to 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 do an install in their home mm -hmm. in their in the business mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well that's a good point too have, have you uh taken advantage of anything any type of rebates or grants or things like that in your uh, as a matter of fact i have i i yeah. had the lights done a, a year ago okay and throughout the store with the led lights it, it cost me like i must have been less than a hundred dollars to mm -hmm. put them in the entire place that's terrific. Yeah. Okay. Again, it's just knowing that and and looking for the looking for that. Uh, I guess free money a little bit mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, hey, man, how about you with this whole topic of of barriers? Uh, you've got three stores that have eco in its name. So uh, you know, obviously, you know, it's it's really important to you. Have you run into what are some of the biggest barriers that you run into uh, as far as running a business that way or sustainable? Well, we're talking about two different barriers here. We're talking, uh, what my peers have been saying, which is is customer uh, mindset and habits. That's that's a that's one side of the barrier discussion. What we haven't talked about is a lot of the financial and physical barriers to going green. You know, machine technology costs and logistics constraints in buildings. I mean, mm -hmm. you there's a lot of folks on the East Coast that can't put the types of machines in. Mm -hmm. They don't access to uh, adequate 
water systems. They don't have a, uh, access to great uh, natural gas sources. So the idea of being able to really green up can be restrained by the by your environment, by mm -hmm. uh, buildings, by agency codes and restrictions. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, it's a combination of both, right? So we're having mm -hmm. to change that we're having to educate consumers and uh, and so that they understand how to wash uh, in a greener fashion while at the same time we have to overcome the barriers the physical and, and financial barriers to mm -hmm. give them technologies to do what they do to to, to do those things it's not mm -hmm. enough to be using you know 25 year old machines and trying to teach them how to wash differently mm -hmm. when we as operators aren't doing what we need to do which is mm -hmm. to upgrade to embrace the new technology to be a greener and create a better footprint for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. Right, right. It's it's kind of a two way street. It's it is uh, mm -hmm. for sure. absolutely. Okay, okay. I just want to uh, remind everybody that uh, you know we've got a great panel here, and uh, any questions that you may have as we're going through this program, please feel free to uh, type them into that question uh, box. Send them over, and we'll uh, we'll have the panel. Uh, let's take advantage of them uh, and their knowledge here today. So uh, certainly send your questions in. Uh, I have another question, which is uh, just sustainability trends. What what trends are you all seeing right now within the last couple of years? Uh, Dave, let me start with you. What what are some sustainability trends that you're seeing in the industry? A lot of them are small. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the lighting is, uh, you know, they're just almost no brainers, you know, the LED lighting and, and those are so much more efficient. Um, yeah. well, but a lot of them are costly, you know, and that, that is an issue when, it, when, it, when yeah. things cost a lot. It's hard to do multiple costly things at once for a laundry, typical laundry owner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, one, one issue, I think, it's still on the barriers on the barriers, but is that the laundry laundering in general has so many like segments to it. You know, our laundromats are one of the segments that we're talking about now, but also there are other, there's on-premise laundries that, that typically are in hotels and other businesses that do their own laundering that don't go to laundromats to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and there are, oh, there are also commercial laundries that that have large businesses, and then there's residential laundering. There's all this kind of laundering. There's government, like like they do laundering even at submarines. You know, there's a right. system there. So you know, you got just all kinds of different laundering. There's nothing that's tying everything together with a recommended system you know we, we're still back at the, the old conventional system that that's been around for 100 years mm -hmm. i don't know if, if some if, you know and that affects also people that are doing the regulations mm -hmm. um so the people that are doing regulations for one of these segments are not thinking about the others and it's just we're kind of splintered on laundering you know, mm -hmm. where people can, can go and do it. And it just, we need more like coordination. Like, uh, I think, let's see, Matt, you, you said something about the, the inconvenient truth um, a while back. And then there was something called the Montreal Protocol that prevented uh, the release of the manufacturer of of uh, like coolants and that save the ozone layer and all of that. Uh, we need more of, of like a larger, broader uh, involvement with, with various segments to arrive at the best way of what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Absolutely, it's it's a much bigger uh, a bigger picture than uh, than even mm -hmm. that. So, mm -hmm. well, well, Kathy, how, how about you? As far as just just some trends, just some industry trends that you're seeing regarding sustainability within the last couple of years. Anything that's kind of taking hold? Um, I, I've noticed that those owners that have standalone stores that you know aren't under a lease necessarily, um, mm -hmm. you know, doing the solar panels. 
because that can significantly um, decrease your your cost and and use you know obviously sunlight to um, to run a lot of you know some of the lights and equipment in the store. I see that, and uh, now that uh, some of the malls are. are are installing EV chargers that that can also drive customers not only into the to the facility but mm -hmm. um, also uh, set set the tone for the um, the landlord and the business that you're interested in that and mm -hmm. and and be mindful of the fact that that a lot of people are going to have EV cars and be prepared for them um, mm -hmm. when they when they do arrive. So those those two things I know. Yes, yeah, those are. Two two great points, absolutely. Uh, Matt, how about yourself? Uh, what what trends are you seeing taking hold uh, as far as the greening of the industry? Well, I've been with I've been in the industry for twelve years now, and I would say that the push environmentally uh, over the last three years has been the strongest. And I think mm -hmm. that's only uh, those tailwinds are only going to continue to increase over time. What we're mm -hmm. seeing recently over the last eighteen months is a move towards cold water only stores. Embracing mm -hmm. this own insulation systems, ozone systems, and coupled with cold water only. So getting rid of boilers, going to uh, small, uh, high efficiency, standalone uh, tankless water heaters to just heat small amounts of water for bathrooms and sink areas and really go cold. And in fact, we're, we're building a new store in North Portland and it's going to be cold only. And we're going to educate our consumers about what it's like uh, to get to not only get just as clean clothes, but to extend the life of fabrics, to extend the life of their clothes, and mm -hmm. that's really benefiting long term from making mm -hmm. what a great environmental choice up front. But we're going to make that point. And we're, we're in an area and in a demographic that we think is going to be very, very open and accepting of that change in, in mm -hmm. ideology as well as habits. And we talked about habits and how those are so hard to break. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be a trend I think that we see to, uh, as we move as an industry. I think you're going to see a m more and more of these cold only stores popping up. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating, yeah. I would love, can't wait to see what happens yeah. with that down the road. Absolutely. Yes. Um, I, I, I wanna ask each of you, what specific uh, eco-friendly practices you're currently um, you know, initiating at your stores. And let me start with you, Dave. Dave, what are what are what are what are some of the eco-friendly things that you offer your customers and that you do at your business? Okay. Well, one thing I started doing, just kind of uh, below the below, below the advertising and, and promotion type things, I've been recapturing um, laundry detergent that is being discarded or abandoned and using that for uh, to create little um, single load containers that I'm um, um, giving to nonprofit groups like uh, animal shelter or you know, that type of thing. And, and I'm, I would say I'm, I'm collecting about maybe uh, five or six large containers worth of good detergent Mm -hmm. um a month or so and that's being distributed and, and that's that's real helpful to some of those people um mm -hmm. i don't say a lot about that but but it's something one thing i'm doing mm -hmm. another thing would be you know, sometimes the smallest things makes a big difference mm -hmm. for years we had people propping open our outside door um while they're bringing in all kinds of laundry and, and leaving the door jammed, propped real wide open. Mm -hmm. um, to stop that, we just installed a little, like a half of a tennis size ball door stop outside in the sidewalk, and they can only open the door to a 90 degree angle, which is all they really need anyway. Mm -hmm. right. and, that, right. and that the, the problem went away. Mm -hmm. um, I think. You, uh, Kathy, you, you think said something about the hand dryers, the automatic hand dryers. Well, those were good. And the recycling, we religiously recycle everything, even though people continuously throw the stuff in the wrong <laughs> True. pick them out, you know. <laughs> um, but that's, and some people are actually getting to doing that better now. You know, they're, they're really mm -hmm. 
trying to, uh, you know, we've got signage and they're almost embarrassed to throw it in the wrong, <laughs> the wrong tub, you know. Um, right. So we're doing a lot of little things mm -hmm. um, that seem to be helping and, and we feel more comfortable about doing that now with people because people seem to be more understanding now than they were a couple of years ago. Uh, right. When you're trying to augment their, their behavior a little bit. You know? Right. A little easier to sell. Well, that, those are all, those are all really great, uh, great things and little interesting small things that you might not think of that. That's great stuff, Dave. Um, Kathy, how about you? What kind of practices? Uh, and again, you've shared some already uh, mm -hmm. with us, but anything else maybe that you haven't shared uh, that yeah. you're doing in your day to day? Well, let me think. Um, so I mentioned the LED lights. I'm looking at my list here. Um, the recycling stations that we have, and um, you know, David and I have the same issue with people <laughs> reading the signs and thinking, "Does that apply to me or not?" I'm not sure. <laughs> um, then the um, the low flush toilets, motion sensor lights, the hand blowers. We do donate to the um, environmental groups um, on a, an annual basis. We do not hold, bring paper towels into the store because it, it, people have gotten to the habit of, you know, I spilled something, you know, give me a paper towel. And I'm thinking, no, we're not cutting another tree down. Just we'll, we'll come out with a rag and we'll clean it or with a mop and we'll clean it and get them out of the habit of, you know, I got to get a piece of paper, you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's one thing. I mentioned the graduated prices, you know, the less for cold water, more mm -hmm. for, for warm water as well. And then we post our policies up and and best tips for getting a good result that includes cold water and um and 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 less detergent so mm -hmm. um we're, you know we're we're making some impact but yes a lot of it is education and mm -hmm. changing habits um mm -hmm. but um we tried it on all 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 different areas you know and see right. if something sticks right right it's trial and error absolutely mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and Matt, how about, how about yourself as far as what type of eco-friendly practices that you're uh, you're offering at your stores? I think Dave and Kathy did a pretty good job of capturing mm -hmm. the most everything that most everybody's doing. I would just say mm -hmm. that if you're going in to buy a new store, retool a new store, or build a new store, that that's, that's your opportunity to start mm -hmm. thinking right. sustainable. Right. It's after the fact. It's mm -hmm. really neat that you build into your business model and to your customer experience. And mm -hmm. because they'll feel you will get those rewards. We talked mm -hmm. about the agency programs that are out there. We work really closely with the Energy Trust of Oregon. So every mm -hmm. time we're, store, we're getting discounts uh, for all of our equipment, all of our lighting, everything is built for uh, the most efficient from an Energy Trust perspective. Um, mm -hmm. And us, obviously the biggest uh, rebates for the program. Mm -hmm. So it's good. It's it's a win win for everybody, and I just that would be my that would be my biggest um, takeaway is that this has to be something that you're thinking about from day one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a great point. Um, after you've done the basics and you, you've 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 upgraded your equipment and you have efficient equipment, maybe you've done the lights, you've done the obvious things. What are some outside the box items? that you've thought about or you've you've maybe uh implemented or are beginning to implement uh just some some stuff beyond beyond the basics of of being green and matt let me start with you on that well i mentioned ozone ozone is something that's become very popular in our mm -hmm. uh, so uh ozonating the water and that have, gives us a lot of great benefits mm -hmm. uh machines cleanliness of the machines odor of the, uh, you know, reducing um, unwanted odors in the washing process, as well as being allowing us to wash 100% cold. So that's our, that's probably our biggest, uh, our biggest piece of it so far, but we're also exploring, we'll, uh, we'll be exploring with this new store, uh, the perfect pour system, which is the injectable uh, soap system, uh, okay. up to 10 products that can be, uh, that can be injected at the at the machine itself mm -hmm. and the reason that uh, becomes and it hits on the environmental front is because it reduces the the it reduces waste by almost 70 percent so you guys and we all know we've seen every customer that comes in and loves the over 
scope, um, yep. overuse the products mm -hmm. with the per system. They're allowed there that it's a metered amount. It's very economical and it's something that we can offer to our customers while still have giving them the opportunity to bring their own, their own, uh, mm -hmm. material. If they want to bring their own detergents, if they want to bring their own, uh, stuff, they can, but this mm -hmm. is going to be a lot more, uh, efficient with the additives. And mm -hmm. uh, I so said with a spectrum of up to 10 different, um, products. So that includes bleach that includes, um, vinegar that includes all of your different types of uh uh different types of 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 soap uh, mm -hmm. both uh you know both the not name brands and the and the non-name brands as well as free and clear options it just gives you a whole lot of options and at the same time you're helping to extend the life of of the machines because they're not overloaded with material and soap mm -hmm. and build up yeah. so Ultimately, the idea is if we can get one to two more years out of machine life, that's mm -hmm. good for the environment, right? Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. we're not cool. We're not having to uh, to build, uh, you know, build new stores earlier. It, it everything kind of comes in cycles. Yeah, yeah. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, Dave, how about yourself? What outside the box, beyond the basics? What uh, what are you thinking about? What are you seeing? What are you maybe implementing? Well, I I do have. Ozone. I've had ozone, a, a total, you know, wash system for three years now, mm -hmm. now. and uh, it's been brutally difficult to convey the numerous benefits that Matt just spoke about, which are all true. To uh, what what I live in is kind of a, a desert of that kind of technology. I mean, uh, uh, the closest one to me the, using a similar wash system, I think, is a couple hundred miles away. You know, mm -hmm. right. um, uh, one in Pittsburgh, one, uh, it, you know. So it's it's been a real challenge getting people who understand, and once they understand it, try it and use it. It's great, mm -hmm. but it's hard to get people to come for a pure environmental type reason to say, gee, that's a good way I can help the earth. I'll use ozone at this laundromat. It just okay. <laughs> doesn't, hasn't worked that way yet. Yeah. Now. Okay. Um, so I have that. And one other little, little thing that I did was uh, we have most, most laundromats have those, the, the detergent um, machines, the vending machines with little boxes and such in it. Um, I've been re kind of collecting the plastic bag boxes because they're not like soldered together uh, and turning them inside out and then folding up a uh, two packet cardboard packet of uh, detergent dehydrated strips, putting it back in that box and, you know, putting signage on the machine and letting people try the dehydrated strips. Because there's no there's no dehydrated strip company that, mm -hmm. that is uh, making them for these machines that are in all the laundromats. So okay. the people are trying that, and it's it's used it's used especially especially well with the ozone because it doesn't matter what size of the ozone uh, laundry washing that you use, it works really well. Mm -hmm. and two of these strips inside them for it's like two for one so right. that's, that's just another weird little way of trying to you know creep into the sustainability corners of people's minds when they're there you know? perfect perfect kathy how about yourself uh as far as the, that next level of uh, of going green uh beyond uh beyond just equipment and lights or things like that but uh anything uh, beyond the basics well, I've been working at uh, trying to expand the delivery to the to the general public because right now we do it mostly for commercial customers, mm -hmm. and so I've looked into uh, EV vans, um, electric powered vans to do to do that, okay. and um, just uh, hopefully I'll I'll be able to kind of land on on one that I I can afford. 
and um, that's that, that's my little part in <laughs> in doing something uh, new. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, as as David mentioned about the the laundry sheets and the detergent uh, sheets, um, they are really terrific um, because they eliminate the plastic bottles, the waters and the chemicals that are used in it. And it forces people who over pour to use the, the, the sheet itself and not put more in. And uh, so I, at first I looked into like licensing in a, a laundry product, but now I'm working on developing one um, of my own. And to Dave's point about them not being available in vent size, that's my thought is 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 working with a company that can package it into a vent size that we can now introduce that to all of our customers, um, the laundry sheets, the detergents. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's I great. tried that already. I I contacted several of the detergent strip companies. Mm -hmm. And their kind of answer to that is gee, there just isn't a big enough market for that. yes 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 it, it will take scale yeah. it out you know right yes so yeah i'm good, glad that you you um went into that as well and you could see the need so um i'm like like starting with a larger package right now just to kind of get a little traction and then you know to, uh, prove proof of concept and move into the vended size that you know we could all use Great, great. Uh, this is for any of you. Is there any new uh, green technology that you're seeing out there, maybe in some other industry, that you think, well, that might down the road work for laundry? Is there anything that you're seeing or you've read about or, uh, I don't know, anything in your minds on, uh, on green technology that might be new that uh, might be coming down the road? Hmm. I don't know. I can't, I guess we can't use recycled water like like auto um, wash <laughs> people but right i don't know right reclaimed water water reclamation mm -hmm. okay i just thought I'd, i would ask that one uh we do have a couple questions so let me maybe now is a good time to hit into those um someone's asking do you feel that your suppliers and vendors are assisting you with your green initiatives and that's anyone can take hmm. that one you feel you're getting getting the much. assistance from the industry that you need? Not, not much. I don't think so. I think that the manufacturers and the and the companies that make most of the laundry products are pretty much homed into you know doing the same old, same old. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, I, I would agree. See almost any you know I I, I tried that too, but I got you know pretty much turned down by anybody that uh, for even like wasting time talking about it. You know? mm -hmm. I, I would say I don't agree with that. I, I think that, you know, from what we've seen over the last 30 years from a, from a manufacturer standpoint, I mean, extractors are 60% more efficient with the use of water than they were 30 years ago. No, I'm not that, talking wasn't driven, that wasn't driven by this. That wasn't driven by the CLA. That was driven by manufacturers. So, uh, I think that there is a common goal here to understanding that both that everybody needs to be thinking uh, environmentally, and I think it's just like everything is that there has to be a partnership. It's driven both by economy, cost, consumers, and and business and manufacturing. Um, there is, I mean, I know that there are manufacturers out there working on uh, lint trap technology so we can get rid of lint screens and being able to trap all that in different different ways so that we're not putting we're putting less lint uh, debris out into the into the atmosphere mm -hmm. those are not initiatives that were driven by uh, specifically consumers but I guarantee you that there's been there's governmental regulations and there's uh, agency pressure to do those types of things so it's got to start with manufacturers it's not going to start with operators so uh, I, I believe that there is a real push on the manufacturer and, and the vendor side to to engage, to embrace sustainability and, and right. environmental. And, and I definitely would would agree with that. And I think that's it's, it's mainly because the regulations from the, the government's coming in and also the manufacturers that are in, in Europe, um, they're they're 
their mindset is more on about sustainability that we're we're kind of late to the party in in the US so i think those two things together kind of are, are really driving it um i i think the the product people i'm talking about may i'm talking about detergents and things like that um they're just, their mindset, it appears to me that they're more concerned about um, legality of being sued, like with pods, you know, and that or, or reducing their packaging because they can't deliver it. And those things that are costing them a little bit money or would put them in danger from a public relations standpoint, that that it actually do anything on that side. You know? Yeah, when so, I was when I was speaking about manufacturers, I did not mean equipment manufacturers mm. and supplier manufacturers that supply most of the ingredients that we mm -hmm. eat with the equipment that is now becoming much more um, sustainable than it was before. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. I don't see anything happening. Free and clear is not the, not the greatest thing in the world because, you know, so what if there's no aroma or no dye in it? There's still all kinds of other things. What, you, what people need to do is use less of it mm, mm. as but, best as we can and use less of it. But there are there are products out there currently, even on the mass produced markets with Tide and Gain, with regards to high efficiency cold options. So now there's mm. there are liquids. Yes, there's liquids that are being developed just for cold water use. Yeah, that's environment, have, That's an environmental friendly product. High efficiency doesn't mean the greatest sustainability, though. Because you know you, the, the people still have to wash all the chemicals that are in the uh, have to rinse it out and, and you know use more water to rinse it out now and also you know it leaves an odor in the machine um, so there are issues you know no, no product that I can see is just totally wonderful product you know without some issues. This, this is a great question and a, a great conversation that could probably go on all afternoon. Uh, but I appreciate the the point and the counterpoint on that too. Uh, I, there was a second question here, on, and it's on wash dry fold. And I don't know how many of of you offer wash dry fold, but it's it's what are your thoughts on on that? Uh, and as it seems to be getting more popular, and is a wash dry fold service better for the environment, or perhaps is it worse, adding more plastic to the to the environment? What, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, Kathy, can I start with you first? Well, I'm thinking that since, well, I, I do offer wash, dry, and fold, but mm -hmm. I'm thinking that because we do that those processes um, professionally using mm -hmm. less detergent, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? And, and in a more sustainable fashion, that mm -hmm. we're probably doing a better job at it than our customers. No. Um, Matt, how about you? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We're uh, any any load that's washed in a in a laundromat is by and far and away more more efficient and better for the environment as a whole. We're you like Kathy said, we're using the right amount of products, but mm -hmm. we are absolutely using less water. Mm -hmm. We're absolutely uh, uh, doing it in a fashion. When we compare these machines to what's hap what what the retail what the retail machines are doing, there's absolutely no way that you, okay. that uh, that they're as efficient as what we're doing. And with regards to environmental impacts with plastic bags, um, we've we've kind of gone away from plastic bags as much as we can. We're offering uh, reusable bags for our for our repeat uh, customers. So we're offering we sell those bags um, so that we can reduce the amount of the of the thin of the thin plastic bags that is pretty mm -hmm. customary throughout. Uh, the industry, but absolutely, uh, a load that's done uh, wash dry fold in a laundromat is absolutely uh, more environmentally friendly than than one done at home. Perfect, and that's perfect. a good point that Matt makes about the bags. Um, um, that's a great point because um, we're when as we're doing the the deliveries and stepping into that, a laundered or a cloth bag is going to be a requirement. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're not using the the sealing it up in more plastic mm -hmm. to give it back. Point. Great point. Um, I have a question about marketing. Uh, do all of you market your businesses as green businesses, and do you use your 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 eco friendly practices within your marketing campaign? 
Uh, Matt, let me start with you. And obviously it's in your name for three of the stores. So I guess the answer is yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. It is, it is again, it's one of our three primary core values and our in our value proposition with our consumers. It's part of the consumer experience and we we're proud of it. So we tell that story every day. We talk about cold water. We talk about ozone. We talk about all the things that we're doing uh, to uh, to reduce the impacts of our business on the environment. And mm -hmm. it's not that it's the only thing that we use to attract a new customer. But the mm -hmm. reality is, is that the customers really are they're out there. We know the demographics out there and why we would not want to uh, to market to all of those potential customers. Uh, especially as that is a that's that's a group that's growing over time. We really want to embrace that. So I think all operators have to do that. They any operator who wants to be successful long term in this business and into uh, over the next 20, 30, 40 years mm -hmm. is going to have mm -hmm. to embrace uh, environmental stewardship and sustainability. Right. David, uh, what are your thoughts on that as far as marketing yourself uh, as green? Well, um in the store, you know, the importance of having good signage, um, you know, clear and and, and present. Mm -hmm. um, and there, also um, some kind of a, a television presence, you know, there. Nothing fancy, but uh, trying to put the environmental uh, information and education on like bulletin boards and mm -hmm. uh, flyers that we have there. Um, once in a while, I'll do a, uh, like a proposal. For instance, ozone is a great uh, way to disinfect and sanitize things. So I'll do one that would go out to like dermatologists to say, mm -hmm. hey, it's a good idea to tell your patients about it that, you know, have skin issues that, you know, they'll really love something that's washed without any chemical residue in it. Mm -hmm. um, it's an opportunity for them to do something for themselves beyond normal, you know, and they can do it themselves. Um, so once in a while, I'll send some uh, feelers out to places, to businesses I think could um, do well to let their patrons know about something mm -hmm. that we're doing. Yeah, well, those are great ideas. Uh, Kathy, how about you? How do you you market the fact that uh, you're a green operation or do you? Do you use that? Uh, I, yes, I do. It's so mm -hmm. one of our, our brand pillars. And so we have a page dedicated to what we do to try to be more green and eco-friendly on our website. We have it framed and you know, uh, hung up on the wall in the store. Mm -hmm. And um, we also, in our advertisements, we uh, we do indicate that, you know, we donate to the Nature Conservatory and that, that we try to do best for the environment. Um, we could definitely do more. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it should really amp up the social media content because, you know, like we were discussing earlier, the the demographics are are changing and mm -hmm. this generation is is more interested in that so the mix of of you know social media to print and all that will definitely be more going mm -hmm. forward um mm -hmm. on social media and talking about the the green to attract those those mm -hmm. very people right right and that that message is certainly uh resonating more so as uh, the demographics shift and as mm -hmm. customers uh shift as well yeah. Um, last question for all of you, and it's for all of you. Uh, what advice do you have for owners considering going green or getting more eco-friendly or they, they want to either start or get more into it? What's the best advice you can offer them? David. Well, and you have to start somewhere, you know, whether you're buying a used store or you're building a new one, you know, relative, there are d different scenarios, of course. But with an old store, you could have, you know, the idea of, okay, let's renovate it out. Well, that's an ideal time to, to when you're going to do something anyway, to do the greenest thing you can, like a floor that had old, uh, like PVC tiles or something, you may be able to take all the tiles up, polish up the floor, you know, have mm -hmm. a, you know, not even get a new floor, but just use the existing floor. 
So you got to look and, and kind of study the possibilities and, uh, you know, have them almost ordered, say, well, okay, what's my level of, of sustainability going to be when I start, when I open, and see what you can do to just to open and then then know what your next step down, next step down the line will be you know maybe you'll be investing money in like better equipment or you know whatever is needed next so you, mm -hmm. you gotta have, you gotta be creative depending on where it is and and, and what you, what you're doing you know it's hard mm -hmm. to just to have a blueprint that mm -hmm. automatically follow you know right 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 um, Matt, how about yourself? Uh, what advice do you have for other store owners? I 100% agree with Dave. You got to start somewhere, right? And I think Arthur Ashe said it, you start with what you have and you do with what you do the best you can. And that's mm -hmm. what you need to do. If you've got a store that you've inherited or that you've purchased, you start small. You change out uh, paper, paper towel dispensers and put in fans. Um, you get rid of the... Uh, you know, the, the low flush toilets, you replace LED, LED lights. I would encourage everybody to reach out to their municipalities and their agencies to talk about what programs are out there. Mm -hmm. There are programs in every state and every municipality to get rebate money for uh, environmentally, for environmental changes that you can make. And that's a great place to start. And then if you are looking to buy and, and to do a retool or a rebuild or a new build, start with environmental consciousness in in mind as one of your four your four thoughts don't let it be an afterthought in your decision process build your business around sustainability and it will pay off mm -hmm. and kathy i'm going to give you the last word uh what's, <laughs> right. uh, what's your advice well, for uh, uh, operators? matt and, and uh, david made some some great points um and most importantly if you are building out a store or retooling an existing one think about that as as matt was saying just from the start um see trying to go back and and fix it and make it um if efficient is is not the way to go it's it's gonna blow your budget for sure so mm -hmm. just think about it from the start and and, and do something small you know it just just get a recycled bin i don't know how many laundromats right. i've been in they don't even have they don't even have a recycle pail, you know, it's just, that, just put that, that up and put a little paper sign about it and, and get people thinking about it. You, right. you'd be a surprise what kind of impact you'll make on not only their behavior in the store, but what they do at home. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a bonus for the entire community that people start to change what they're doing so that we can all live better um, mm -hmm. going forward. And that's a, that's a great way to leave it right there. I, I think we're out of time. Uh, I do quickly want to share uh a couple of um, upcoming events uh, for CLA. We do have some more webinars coming down the road. Uh, the next two are in uh, July. Um, and on July 17th, we have a webinar on uh, innovative perspectives and insights about work-life integration. Uh, and then the very next day on the 18th, uh, the next Planet Laundry uh, webinar will be on community engagement, uh, getting involved and uh, building your business. Uh, so those are two you may want to check out. Uh, the uh, CLA Connect Live uh, is in uh, full force this summer. Uh, we've got three events coming up, uh, July 25th in Ohio, uh, August 1st in Newark, California, and then again, August 29th uh, in Burlington, Massachusetts. So if you're in the, if any, any of those areas uh, and you want to have a nice meal and network with some uh, local laundry operators uh, and talk shop, uh, it's the perfect opportunity to do that. Um, of course, we've got the Wash Dry Fold Workshop uh, coming up uh, in September. It's uh, September 18th through the 20th in Nashville. Uh, it's a great, uh, great opportunity to learn best practices on uh, Wash Dry Fold, pickup and delivery, commercial accounts, uh, endless networking. Um, if, you, if you've ever been to a CLA event, you know that uh, it's it's nonstop. Uh, if you if you haven't been to one, this would be a great one to uh, to be at. It's in uh, downtown Nashville, uh, the heart of uh, Music City, USA. So uh, that's coming up in September, the Wash Dry Fold Workshop. Um, and then uh, the last thing is just uh, our, our Facebook group. Uh, it's Laundry Professionals Network. Um, Again, if you haven't been there, check it out. Join the conversation. A lot of uh, really knowledgeable operators just talking shop and uh, helping you kind of uh, shorten your learning curve a little bit. So that's uh, Laundromat Professionals Network at, uh, at Facebook. Uh, that's all we have time for. Again, I want to thank
thank all three of our panelists for uh, sharing all their insights and their time this afternoon. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you to you for, um, for uh, being here and checking out the program. Hope you learned something. Um, have a great rest of your day. Okay, you too. Thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Bye.